hanging today. Sorry. Start in a few minutes. Yeah, it's a good. Sorry, did you bring the Bible? Oh, Rabbi, did you have that typed out? The, that part you wanted me to read? It's going to be here. It's going to be here? Yeah, okay. That's what I'm sitting with right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> We just came through that door. Somebody has a clicker? Yeah. Okay. Shabbat Shalom. Let 
רצון מלפניך service to God, creator of heaven and earth, through the agency and ministry of our rabbi, master, messiah, and savior, Yeshua. I hereby join myself to the master, Yeshua, the Messiah, the righteous one, who is the bread of life and the true life, the source of eternal salvation for all those who hear him, like a branch that remains the vine, so we may remain in him. Just as he also remains in the Father, and the Father in him, in order that they may remain in us. As a disciple of Yeshua, I dedicate myself to strive to live by the moving of the Spirit of Yeshua, thus displaying his truth by interacting with all in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. The grace of the Master, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Spirit of Shem abound to us. Amen. If I raise my eyes to the hills from where will my help come, my help comes from Adonai, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. Your guardian is not asleep. 
Yeah. Yeah. Adonai is your guardian at your right hand. Adonai provides you with shame. The sun can't strike here in the day or even in the night. Adonai will guard you against all harm. He will guard your life. Adonai will guard your coming in your own from now on and forever. Mato. Uele Hayako Mishkenote Israel. How good are your tents, Jacob, in great places, O Israel? And we may see them. <coughs> Together. As for me, in the abundance of your loving kindness, I will enter your house. I will prostrate myself towards your holy sanctuary in all of you. I do not. I love the dwelling in the house, even the place where your glory is out. As for me, I will prostrate myself and bow. I will kneel before I do not be my maker. As for me, when my prayer to you, I do not be at an acceptable time. O oh God, in the abundance of your loving kindness, answer me in the truth of your salvation. You understand? Balku et Adonai Amorah, Baruch Ata Adonai Elokeinu Melech Haolam, Yotzer Or, Hu Kore Koshek Ose Shalom, Hu Kore Et Atohot. Blessed are you, Adonai Aga, King of the Universe, Homer of Light, Creator of Darkness, Maker of Peace, Creator of Everything. With much love, you have loved us, Adonai, our God. With great and abounded pity, you have pitied us, and we may sit down. Our Father, our King, for the sake of our fathers who trust in you, and you taught them the statutes of life, so to you be gracious to us and teach us. Our Father, compassionate Father, who acts with compassion, have compassion upon us, and put into our hearts to understand and to comprehend, to listen, learn, and teach, to guard, to perform, and fulfill all the words of the instruction in your Torah with love. Enlighten our eyes in your Torah and cause our hearts to flee to your friend. Unify our hearts to love and to fear your hand, and may we never repeat to shame. Because in your holy, great, and awesome name have we trusted. May we exult and rejoice in your salvation. Bring us in peace from the four corners of the earth and lead us to our land in honor. Because you are God who makes salvation, and you have chosen us from all peoples and tongues and brought us close to your great name forever in truth to offer you thanksgiving and to declare your oneness with love. Blessed are you, Adonai, who chooses to see for Israel with love. May we stand for the Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echa Baruch Shekeko Malkuto Hear, O Israel, Adonai is our God, Adonai is one. Blessed is the glorious name whose kingdom is forever. And we may see that. Adonai Behayu Hadvanim Ha'eli Hashem Anopi Mitzavayom Ha'levavecha Veshinatan Nebanecha Vedibarta Vam Veshitecha Behiveitecha Uvletecha Vahaderet Uvletecha Vahaderet Ushachlecha Ukumecha 
You are to love Adonai your God with all your heart and all your being and all your resources. These words which I am commanding you today are to be on your heart and you are to teach them carefully to your children. You are to talk about them when you sit at home, when you are traveling on the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them on your hand as a sign. Put them at the front of a headband around your forehead and write them on the door frame of your house and on your gate. Anochi Adonai Eloheicha Hashem Otsetiha Mi Eret Mitzayim. Lo Yihir Lecha Elohim Aperim Al Panai, Lo Taase Lecha Pesem. You are not to have no other gods before me. You are not to make yourselves our image. You are not to use flattery in the name of Adonai your God. Remember the day of Shabbat to set it apart from God. Honor your father and mother. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not give to your neighbor. Do not commit adultery. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not give to your neighbor. Do not Mechamocha be'elim Adonai Mechamocha netabakotesh Noat is hiyot Ohose fele Ohose fele Mechamocha be'elim Adonai Mechamocha netabakodesh Noat ezirot Ohose fele Ohose fele Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods who are worshipped? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in splendor, working wonders? And the people of Israel are to keep the Shabbat, to observe Shabbat through all their generations as a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the people of Israel for 
forever. For in six days a divine made heaven and earth, but on the seventh day he stopped working and resting. Amen. You can sit down. Uh, so today is the last Shabbat before Rosh Chodesh. Who knows what is Rosh Chodesh? They're going to have a, a new month starting next week. So that means that we will also pray for the new month. But also on Tuesday night is Shofar really in the evening. On Tuesday night. So we'll try to send a reminder. But if not, this is one. So, um, so we'll have a Torah service with our new Torah scroll, which we will dedicate at the time of the Ark, when we have the Ark. No rush, you know, it happens when it happens. You know, if the king of England can wait six months to get coronated, you know. <laughs> and so, um, um, yeah, and the reason for that is that the name for the dedication of a Torah scroll is Achnasa. Can you say Achnasa? And that comes from the word Lehikanes, the verb which means to enter. It's actually the time where the Torah scroll enters the ark. So we cannot have an entering without something to enter it. You know, so, so that's the idea. Um, <clears throat> so we'll do uh, Torahs if some people will come and read. So, amen. And we are starting with a new cycle. So we're starting at the beginning. And let's stand for the song. I was glad when they said to me, the house of Adonai, let's go. Are we, are we standing at the gates of Yerushalayim? Yerushalayim, built as a city fostering friendship and unity. The tribes from out there, the tribes of Adonai, for there the thrones of justice were set up, the thrones of the house of David. May Shalom be within your ramparts, prosperity in your palaces. For the sake of my family and friends, I say, Shalom be within you. For the sake of the house of Adonai, our God, I will see the world. And let's see now. En kamocha be Elohim Adonai, ve en kemasecha, malchutcha malchut kol olami, umemshatecha bechoto vado. Adonai melech, Adonai Malach, Adonai Himlo, Leolam Vahe, Adonai Ose Amoiten, Adonai Evaret Et Amo Vashalom, Avarakani, Eti Babir Tzomcha, Et Zion. Tibne Komot Yerushalayim, Tibne Komot Yerushalayim. Ki Vecha Levat Batahnu, Melech El Avenisa Adon Olami. And together with English, there is none like you among the gods, O Adonai, and there are no works like yours. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures to all generations. Adonai reigns, Adonai has reigned, Adonai will reign forever and ever. Adonai will give strength to his people, Adonai will bless his people with peace. Father of mercy, do good to Zion according to your will. Build the walls of Jerusalem, for our trust is in you alone, O King, our exalted God, Master of the universe. And let us stand now. By he bin soa, ah ah ah, 
ויאמר משה, קומה אדוני, ויפוצו אויביך, וינוסו משמך מפניך. כי מציון תצא תורה, כי מציון תצא תורה, ודבר אדוני מירושלים. ברוך שנתן תורה תורה, ברוך שנתן תורה תורה, ועמו ישראל בהקדושתו. And then when the ark would set out, then Moshe would say, Rise up, O Adonai, and let enemies be scattered, and let them that hate you flee from before you. For from Zion shall come forth Torah, and the word of Adonai for Jerusalem. Blessed is he who gave the Torah to his people, Israel, in his holiness. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Yehudi Shema Yisrael Eloheinu Adonai Echad Eloheinu Our God is great, great is that in our God. Gadlu l'adonai iti, unchom mashmu yachda. May he help shield and save all who trust in him. Venoma, amen. Akol havu godel le'elomeheinu. ותנו כבוד לתורה. Let's click again. I will read from the Torah portion segment over the sheet where where from the very beginning the old serpent tries to steal mankind's obedience and devotion to Hashem towards himself. For that, he will be forever cursed. And you can see that. Arhu et Adonai hamborach Baruch Adonai hamborach leolam ha'et Baruch ata Adonai elokeinu benech ha'olam asher machal banu mikol ha'anani ונתן לנו את תורתו, ברוך אתה אדוני נותן התורה. 
Blessed are you, Adonai our God, King of the universe, who has chosen us from all peoples and has given us his Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. And we will read the passage from Genesis 9 through 15. Yes, we're going to have to hold it here. Vayikha Adonai Elohim El Adam Vayomer Lo Eha Vayomer Et Kolcha Shamati Vigam Vayira Ki Ki Irom Anuchi Vechabe Vayomer Mi Akid Lecha Ki Irom Ata Amin Haetz Asher Tzivi Techa לחלתי וחל ציבית אחד לבלתי וחל ממנו אכלת ויאמר האדם האישה אשר נתת עמידי היא נתנה מן העץ ואוכל ויאמר אדוני אלוהים לאישה מה זאת עשית בתומר האישה? הנחש, הנחש עשי אני ואוכל, ויאמר אדוני אלוהים אל הנחש, כי עשית זאת, ארור אתה מכל הבהמה ומכל חיית השדה. על גחניך תלך ואפך תאכול. כל ימי חייך, ואויבה עשית בין, ביניך ובין האישה ובין זרע, זרע ובין, ובין זרח ובין זרעה. הוא ישופך ראש ואתה תשופנו עקב. Adonai called the man. Adonai God called him to the man. Where are you? And he answered, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree from which I ordered you not to eat? The man replied, The woman you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Adonai God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman answered, The serpent tricked me, so I ate. Adonai God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all livestock and wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and eat dust as long as you live. I will put animosity between you and the woman and between your descendant and her descendant. He will bruise your head and you will bruise his ear. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר נתן לנו תורת אמת וחיי עולם נתן בתוכנו ברוך אתה אדוני נותן התרומה ההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההה
Let's put it uh, Hashem has weight. May it have weight in our heart too. In Hebrew, the word weight and the word honor and glory are the same word. It's also the same as the word liver, <laughs> which is the heaviest organ in our body. Okay, so we can go to the next slide. To you, Adonai, is the goodness and the power, glory and victory and majesty. Everything that is in the heavens and the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, Adonai. Exalted heaven over all. Holy, is He. Exalted and worshipped Holy is the Lord God. Okay, we can sit down. And for the after section, Tamod Jenny Batavram la Haftara. Call Jenny to read. Where in the days of Ezekiel, Pharaoh afflicts the children of Israel. Hashem calls him crocodile in Hebrew, Tanin, which refers more to a monstrous sea serpent. As he speaks to Pharaoh, Hashem speaks of the snake's future fate. Uh, let's go to the next here. Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Bakar Benvim, Tovim, Veratza, Bevarechem, Hanei Emarim Be'emet, Baruch Adonai HaVocher Ba'akura, U Meshe Abdo, U Vizrael Amo, U Vin Vee Haamet Vatzed. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has chosen for us good prophets to give us wonderful words of truth. Blessed are you, Adonai, who chooses the Torah, Moses his servant, Israel his people, and prophets good and true. So, yeah, on the twelfth day of the tenth month of the tenth year, the word of Adonai came to me. Human being, turn your face against Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Prophesy against him and against all Egypt. Speak out and say that Adonai Elohim says, I am against you. 
Pharaoh, king of Egypt, you big crocodile lying in the streams of the Nile. You say, my Nile is mine. I made it for myself. But I will put hooks in your jaws and make your Nile fish stick to your scales. Yes, I will bring you up from your Nile with all your Nile fish sticking to your scales and leave you in the desert, you and all your Nile fish. You will fall in the open field and not be gathered or buried, but I will give you as food to wild animals and birds. Then all who live in Egypt will know that I am Adonai, because they have been a support made of straw for the house of Israel. Amen. Ha'el hanet amam ha'omer ve'ose ham daber un kayem shekol divrav emet vazeret. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, Rock of all ages, righteous in all generations, he who says and does, who speaks into being, all whose words are truth and righteousness. Amen. <laughs> and may he who blessed our ancestors, Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, Sacharit Karachel, Bliya. Bless Janice, who has come from an aliyah in reverence to Hashem and in honor of the Shabbat. In reward of this, may the Holy One, blessed is He, guard and deliver Janice from affliction and distress, from opposition and illness, and prosper Janice in all her endeavors together with our Israel. And let us all say, Amen. 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 And for the Messianic uh, Haftara, Ta'amod Salvador Ben Abraham, Ta'haftara. And we will read that at the end of the age, the snake, the monstrous sea serpent, whom Yohanan sees as a dragon, will continue persecuting the people of God, in particular those who follow the commandments of Hashem in the Torah, as well as bear witness to Yeshua. Yes, this one. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who in days gone by spoke in many and varied ways to the fathers through the prophets. But now, in the Akhari Hayamim, end of days, has spoken to us through his Son, to whom he has given ownership of everything and through whom he created the universe. The Son is the radiance of the Shekinah, divine presence the very expression of God's essence, upholding all that exists by his powerful word. And after he had, through himself, made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of Hagula Van Romim, the majesty on high. Blessed are you, Adonai, who gives us the Torah, and Yeshua, his son, to give us wonderful words of truth. Amen. And we'll read from Revelation 12, 7 to 17. Next, there was a battle in heaven. Mikhail and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But it was not strong enough to win, so that there was no longer any place for them in heaven. The great dragon was thrown out, that ancient serpent, also known as the devil and Satan, the adversary, the deceiver of the whole world. He was hurled down to the earth, and his angels were hurled down with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now have come God's victory, power, and kingship, and the authority of his Messiah, because the accuser of our brothers, who accuses them day and night before God, has been thrown out. They defeated him because of the Lamb's blood, and because of the message of their witness. 
Even when facing death, they did not cling to life. Therefore rejoice, heaven, and you who live there. But woe to you, land and sea, for the adversary has come down to you, and he is very angry because he knows that his time is short. When the dragon saw that he had been hurled down to the earth, he went in pursuit of the woman who had given birth to the male child. But the woman was given the two wings of the great eagle so that she could fly to her place in the desert where she is taken care of for a season and two seasons and a half season away from the serpent's presence. The serpent spewed water like a river out of its mouth after the woman in order to sweep her away in the flood, but the lamb came to her rescue. It opened its mouth and swallowed up the river which the dragon had spewed out of its mouth. The dragon was infuriated over the woman and went off to fight the rest of her children, those who obey God's commands and bear witness to Yeshua. Yeah. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who in these last days has sent us our Messiah, Yeshua, to be the, medi the mediator of reconciliation between us, his, and our Father. He is Savior and Redeemer, door of the sheepfold, bread and water of life, and light of the world. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who sends us the Messiah. Amen. And may he who blessed our ancestors, Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, Sarah, Ravka, Rachel, and Leah, bless Salvador, who has come for Inalia in reverence to Hashem and in honor of the Shabbat. In reward of this, may the Holy One, blessed be he, guard and deliver Salvador from affliction and distress from opposition and illness, and prosper Salvador in all his endeavors together with all Israel. And let us all say, Amen. Amen. Yes, which means congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. And let's stand together for the Ezraim. Ezraim, Lemachazikim ba. Betan <laughs> A tree of life to those who hold fast to it, and all who cling to it for happiness. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all his paths are peace. Return us, O Lord, to you, and we shall return. Renew our days as in the days of old. And when the ark rested, Moshe would say, Dwell, O Lord, among the myriads of the families of Israel. Come up, O Lord, to your resting place, you and the ark of your mind. May your priests be clothed in righteousness and your faithful sin for joy. Praise his teaching do I give you. Never forsake my Torah. Oh, we may 
intensità. Difku ma iftah lahem. Keep knocking and the door will be open to you. He who blessed our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, may he watch over Israel and continue gathering his remnants from the four corners of the world. May he super. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Sorry. May he supply, protect, guard, and lead each congregation in Israel and in diaspora. May he provide them with sound teaching reflecting the heart of the fathers of Israel and that of Yeshua, our Master. May he teach us to test the Spirit and discern between right and wrong, clean and unclean, true and false. May he bring up from our children a generation that will be strong in the face of the enemy of our souls. May he bless the fighters of the Israel Defense Force. May the Holy One bless him as he. Preserve and rescue our fighters from every trouble and distress, from every plague and illness. May he set blessing and success in their every endeavor that may be fulfilled for them your promise, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you to battle the enemy for you to save you. May he bless, guide, and protect the soldiers of the American forces who fight with integrity and honor to protect the land in which we presently reside. May he comfort their families and provide for them in their time of need. May he give courage not only to those on the front line, but also to those who return men and women. May the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob turn the hearts of the powers that be in the favor of the children and the land. May he overflow with compassion, restore, heal, strengthen, and quicken. So, yes. Christine, Tiza, whoever is sick, I'm going to check here if I have anything. Okay. Anyone else? Oh, yes. Um, our brother in law, Gary. Okay, Gary, yeah. Children who are not here. Children who are not here. Oh, yes. Okay. Is Susan doing better? Not too bad. Yeah, Susan. <laughs> yes. Sylvia Marx and Ben Franklin. Ben Franklin. Yeah. yeah, Teresa. Brooke or so she's uh, she's okay. Brooke's okay. She just didn't have a ride home today. Okay. Somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, and also I think she was asking for prayer for her situation, her family situation, and her yeah. mother and all that. So we can add that to it too. And here I have uh, Laura and Tom Sparks. That's what I have. Okay. May he set speedily a complete healing, healing of the soul and healing of the body. May Hashem also strengthen and comfort their families as well as those who care for the sick and dying. May Hashem supply for those who struggle financially and comfort those who struggle emotionally. May He be a supporting presence to all those who are going through difficult times of any kind. May all find comfort in remembering the words of our Master and Rabbi Yeshua. Aren't sparrows sold for next to nothing? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground without your father's consent. 
Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, the author and fulfiller of our hopes, who leads us to health and sickness, wealth and poverty, joy and mourning, life and death. So let's go to the next one, which is the mock prayer for the ones in English. Let's stand up for that. And we're entering the month of Cheshvan, Tuesday night. May it be your will, Adonai, our God, and the God of our forefathers, that you inaugurate this month of Cheshvan for goodness and blessing. May you give us long life, a life of peace, a life of goodness, a life of blessing, a life of sustenance, a life of creativity and substance, and life in which there is fear of heaven and fear of sin, a life in which there is no shame or humiliation. A life with fulfilling work and dignity. A life filled with the love of Torah and the fear of heaven. A life in which Adonai fulfills the request of our hearts for good. May it be so, Beshem Yeshua Mashiach, the agent of your creation, through him you order the seasons. Avinu Sheba Our Father in heaven. Kadesh Shimcha. תבוא מלכותך, יעשה רצונך, כאשר בשמיים גם בארץ. את לחם חוקנו תן לנו היום, ומחל לנו על חובותינו כאשר מחלנו גם אנחנו לחייבינו. ואל תבינו לי דניסיון, כי אם תחלצנו מן הרע, כי לך המלאכה והגבורה והתפארת לעולמי עולמים. אמן. Let's bring the children. So you know, we just read about the story of Adam and Eve, right? And the devil. His name is represented by an animal. What animal is that? A snake. A snake. So, and Yeshua, our King, is represented by what? But if we think of Yeshua, there's two animals: a lamb or a a lion. Okay. So, what a small lion? Not a baby lion. A cat. Cat, same family. And a small and a big snake is a dragon. So one time, so one time, you know, I was walking down the street and I was in a neighborhood, it was sunny, you know, it was in the summer. And from far away, I see a cat. It was like a teenager cat, maybe, you know, not a kitten and not an adult cat. Teenager cat, black, and he was playing with something on the ground. I didn't know what it was, and it was too far away, you know. And so I come closer, I come closer, and the cat looks at me and he wants to go away, but he's too taken with what's going on on the ground, you know. So when I come closer and I come closer, and the cat still tries to stay there and not run away from me, you know. And when I'm done, what do I see? I see that this cat was having a lot of fun. A lot of fun terrorizing a small garden snake. And the snake didn't know where to go, what to do, and the cat was really. And I thought, wow, what a good image of the victory and control how lion has over the snaky devil. Right? Okay. Who was afraid? The cat or the snake? Same thing here. Okay, very good. Okay, wow. Let's do one prayer for everybody, okay? Boys and girls, we try that. 
Abba Father, we thank you for uh, the children that are here. We thank you also for the children that are not here. We ask that you, um, we ask that you bless and that you strengthen them. I ask that you continue growing them. Uh, in the fear of you, in the knowledge of your Torah, and in learning your wisdom from your Torah. I ask that you make them strong and valiant uh, people of your kingdom uh, that will be able to make the difference between the clean and the unclean, the true and false, the right and the wrong. And uh, I ask that you give them all the tools that they need to face the days ahead. As that you make them like uh, Abraham, like Ephraim, and Manasseh, like Rachel, like Leah, whom you chose to be mothers and fathers of your kingdom. Shem Yeshua Mashiach. Amen. Okay, let's stand for the blessing. May Adonai bless you and keep you. May Adonai make his face shine upon you and show you his favor. May Adonai lift up his face towards you. May Adonai give you his peace, his shalom. Hashem Yeshua Mashiach. Amen. Okay. Well, let's take a little break and then we'll have a midrash. <laughs> Moses came here today. Look at that. He's trying to hide. <laughs>
Did we do announcements? We didn't do announcements. I forgot to do the announcements. <laughs> Silly me. If I just follow the instructions, it works. <laughs> announcements. Thank you. <laughs> Don't like when this thing wobbles. <laughs> no wobble. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, so let's uh, let's get together again. Well, and you were an only child, right? So you didn't have other siblings to play childish games with. You probably were more on the adult side of your young adults. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Well, I mean, well, it's interesting how many of them are kind of evil and dark spirited, and yeah, yeah. But I guess in the death, he just made it all part of the story. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, okay, well, I fell on the wall with Jesus. How do we turn this around and make it fun? Make it good. Okay, let's start with the Amidrash. Um, so, yeah, I'm sorry, I see everybody wearing coats, and I realized that the heat was not on, so it's 63 inside here. I was wondering, what's happening here? <laughs> and so, I'm going to have to talk with the pastor about that. Uh, so, there is a, a folk, I totally skipped the announcements. <laughs> so, there is over there a cardboard box with a, three, four items in it. These are items that were left at our place. There was a, this is a, a little sweater, uh, some taco, you know. So it's our last, in fact. And I guess, uh, you know, there was no Onega at uh, the eaves today. Okay. Okay, so. <laughs> ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם, אשר קידשנו במצוותיו, וציוונו לעסוק בדברי תורות. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, has commanded us to be engaged with the words of the Torah. O Lord our God, we ask that you make the words of your Torah sweet in our mouths, and in the mouth of your entire people of the greater house of Israel. May we, our descendants, the descendants of your people, 
the house of, Is of Israel, know your name and study your Torah for its own sake. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, who teaches Torah to his people. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who chose us from all the people and gave to us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, who gives the Torah. So usually at the beginning of the cycle, I kind of get myself the theme for the year. And uh, so one, one year we did the book of Didiki. One year we did uh, last year, uh, I don't know, did I have a theme last year? I don't even know. One year we did the Haftarah. And this year I don't know exactly. Uh, but uh, in Torah club there is a new theme. It's a Torah, totally new subject. is looking at the parasha through the eyes of uh, the poetic books, which are Job, Psalm, Proverbs, Ecclesiastics, Song, Song of Songs, Lamentation. You know, so and I thought that's pretty good uh, material. That that's actually so pretty new. You know, so I thought maybe to 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 uh, to jump from it a little bit for even our uh, Shabbat, Shabbat midrash, we'll see how it works. We'll see how it goes. You know, like I always say, the plan is what we do until God shows otherwise. You know, so it's a paraphrase from the real statement that I learned: is the schedule is what we follow until God shows otherwise. <laughs> okay, so so. This one will be called Wisdom in the Beginning. So for those of her to our clubs, oh no, we're doing the same thing. It's not exactly, there, there, there is a little bit of extra stuff because at our club, we don't have time to go through everything. You know, so, uh, so the word Torah, which is in many Bibles, most English Bible translated as the word law doesn't mean law at all. The law in Hebrew is the word din, dalet, yod, nun, sofit. That's a law. The word Torah means literally teaching or instruction. There is similar words, for example, the word teacher, more, masculine, mora, feminine. So it really has to do, it really should be called the teachings, the teachings. So, and the instruction. I like some people have said, be a be a basic instructions before leaving earth. You know. To me, I think it's basic instruction, yes, but to be lived on earth. It's to be lived on. It's how we live. A Torah teaches us about here, how to live our lives here. That's what the Torah is all about. So, but whether, whereas the, the instructions for our life really start at um, Exodus 20, when uh, Hashem starts giving his commandments to the children of Israel, whether that really starts at Exodus 20, that whole, uh, that, that whole, that, that Torah, the instructions, they are embedded into the story of the children of Israel, uh, starting, of course, Adam and Eve, but then uh, going into Egypt and the Exodus, and the, the giving of the Torah is actually embedded, cradled into the narrative of the story of the children of Israel. That's, that's where it is. Now, why do that? God could have just said, hey, here we go. Here's my commandments. Live them. But the command without a context can be very uh, ambiguous. For example, if I say, pour the milk in the pot, I can only understand what the command is if I know the context. Am I in a stable? 
milking cows? Am I in the kitchen making a dish, dish between breakfast? Am I camping? Am I in a chemistry lab? Is this, is the context of this a person, a nursing mom? So the context defines the instructions. Does that make sense? You know, because the word milk, you know, you have milk of milk of magnesium. You have a, milk is also a chemistry, uh, chemistry term. So we have to, the, 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 the commandments we get are defined by the context of the, the children of Israel. So, in, so, like we said, this context starts with the creation and what has been called the fall of man. And when I say the fall of man, because we know what we're talking about, we know that it's not like Adam who stumbled or something, you know, it means the fall from grace, the fall because of disobedience and sin. We know what we're talking about. It was, it was indeed a fall, but a fall that may, may have led to an awakening in consciousness. Like I heard one time a pastor teach that it's possible that, uh, and how many were closer to God afterward, even though they were not in his presence. And here's how, here's why. They knew before the fall, it seems like they, they took for granted their presence with God. They took it for granted. When afterward, they had to learn to seek him. They had to learn to seek him. It's like one of my children, you know, he always took for granted that he always had three meals a day at home. You know, he even complained about the food. But when he started living on his own, oh, how he was thankful. <laughs> He come to the house and he says, oh, I remember home. There was always three meals a day. So and there he was thankful. So when we lose what we have, we become more thankful for, for when we had it. We are more conscious. So uh, now, after the fall, human beings, uh, us, have to make a conscious effort to be close to a shed. So, and that is really the story of the Torah, the context, the creation of man, the fall of man, and Hashem doing everything he can in order to restore that communication, that, uh, that, uh, relationship with us and teaching us how to do it. And I personally think that Hashem looks more for us than we look for him. You know, like when he, he I, I like this picture that we read, uh, Hashem comes to the garden and say, Adam, where are you? I think he's still, that still happens. He, tell, he tells a lot of people, where are you? He's the one looking for us. You know, and then he teaches us how to get in touch with him in this new realm, you know, and so I'm gone, but you can do this, you can do that, you know. So, uh, so this is the story of the Torah. Now, the Torah really, when people say Torah, they say it's the five books of Moshe. The middle of that book, the middle of the five books of Moshe, the middle verse and the middle word, okay? The middle word is in Leviticus 10, 16. And if you see on the, on, on the screen, I left a space. I made the, the two words where the middle is, I made them bigger, right? And there's a space in between. And do you notice that they're the same words? Do you see uh, here? 
You see, in Hebrew, there's two words that are bigger, and they're the same. You know, you don't have to know Hebrew. There's the word dalet resh shin. Dalet resh shin. It means drash. Drash. So, uh, so what, what does drash mean? You know, like in in a Catholic Church, when the priest gives his teaching, I think they call it a homily. That's correct. Correct. Thank you. In in the Protestant, it's a it's a sermon, right? In synagogue, it's a midrash, from the word drash, and the word drash midrash, it's about this is what I taught uh, what's her name uh, Tirza to do like this, because it's a search, like Paul uses, uh, Paul is uh, to to search to is like this uh, so midrash is like this. Uh, Paul uses that expression. He says, search the scripture. Actually, Yeshua says it. Search the Torah, the scriptures, because they are the ones who testify. Search. That's the word rash. When we study, we search another dimension of the scripture. We search all it can tell us. You know, because we never understand everything just at first cursory look. You know, black and white, literally. You know, so, so drash means Search. It's the same word as to search for something sometime. And um, in Hebrew, when you want to say, uh, for example, if you see the English here, it doesn't say uh, Moses, okay, he uses the word investigated for search, okay? But it did say Mo Moshe investigated what had happened. The Hebrew would say Moshe searched for the goat of the sin offering. You see, the et seir chata, for you guys can read it, the, the, the goat of the sin offering, drush, drush Moshe, searched, searched Moshe. So in Hebrew, when you want to put an emphasis like search carefully, you just repeat the verb. You know, I could say carefully, but in Hebrew, really, especially biblical Hebrew, and even today, you repeat the verb, and that means intently search carefully, vehemently, whatever adjective you want to use. It adds emphasis when you repeat the verb, and that's what happened. So, and right in between the verb is the exact middle of the talk. You know, and I heard a Messianic teacher one time teach that, uh, actually, I think it's Daniel Lancaster, that actually the the center and the heart of the Torah is, is to research for Yeshua, who is being compared to the sin offering. You know, so I thought that would be something interesting. This is really the heart of the Torah. I mean, last year, two, three years ago, in Torah Club, we studied shadows of Messiah, which is finding Yeshua in the Torah. We searched, we carefully searched for Yeshua in the Torah. That's what we did three years ago at Torah Club. And we did exactly that. So, uh, now, the one of the Things that in the Torah and the commandment that we, one of the first thing that, uh, not, maybe not the first thing, but one of the important things that we are taught is Leviticus 1 through 5, which is actually the first book that ultra Orthodox teach to their children. Leviticus. Uh, they don't start with Bereshit, with Genesis. They start with Leviticus, and they don't tell the they don't paraphrase the text to their children. They just have them memorize it. But Leviticus is about what? Who knows what is the Leviticus one through five about? If you don't, it's okay. To do what not to do, the holidays. No, that's Leviticus twenty-three. <laughs> 
What's that? Okay, the okay, it has to do with the priest. The offering, that's right. The, the offering. The in, in Bibles it would say the sacrifices, the offering, you know. And again, what is the Hebrew for that? The Hebrew, who knows? Somebody knows? Korban, that's right. There is an American university called Korban University. I don't know if that's where they got it from. You know, but. So, Korban. Korban comes from the word Kerev, which means to be close to, next to, near. Korban has to do with the coming near to God, approaching God. How do we do that? What's the protocol? Like if I want to go see the, the president of the United States, I just don't walk the lawn and, hey, hi. How are you? Don't do that. There is a protocol, boy. And I might, might, might not get to see it. You know, so uh, same thing with any officials, like a judge or some of these protocols. Well, this is a protocol. He, he, he did all that to teach us what? How to come back in communication with them. That communication we had lost in Genesis 3. This is a whole idea. Koban, I like to translate it as token of approachment, because the whole idea is you take the blood of an animal and that blood represents you before God. And it's going to be the right animal done in the right way by the right priesthood at the right place and everything. But that represents God. And the, when the temple was there, there was the, the, the court for the man, the court for the woman, the court for the foreigners. So that it was the, the it represented the, the communication tower for the whole world towards Hashem. So it's really made of communication. If you want to talk to me, here's what you do. You know, it's awesome. So the Torah really was to, the whole goal is, is going to teach us how you get back in touch with me. How you get back in touch with me. Because we lost that. We lost that. So. So really, the, the word korban is token of approachment. There might be a better way to say it. But that's what it is, because he wants to be in touch with us probably more than we want to be in touch with him. You know, He looks for us more carefully than we look for him. The whole business of the Torah is to get us back together, to, to be, lead us toward Yeshua so that we can be reconciled. That's the whole idea. In a nutshell, so in a nutshell, really, the story that embeds the Torah is through sin, man loses its special connection with Hashem. Hashem has a plan B, whereas he chooses a family, brings them to Egypt so they can grow as a people, as a nation, takes them out of Egypt, sanctifies them, purifies them, teaches them how to approach him, while still in this worldly realm, realm, so that they could in turn be a light to the nations around them, so all of humanity gets a chance to also return in communication with Hashem, because it's Adam and Eve in whom all humanity fell, not just Israel, all of humanity. So, and that represents the beginning of the return to Eden. In my view, the children of Israel are really just a tool, a conduit, a conduit from God to the rest of the world. Really just a tool, you know, to, to hear, I'll show you who I am, then how... I want people to live, and then you got to establish a country where these things are going to be the norm, and then, and then at a certain point in time, you go into all the nations, and you're supposed to be a light. It's written in Isaiah, a light to the nation, the light of God to the nation. To me, that's the ultimate goal, the ultimate goal. Children of Israel are just a conduit, because what God's after is really the big majority of the world. We're like a pipe. You know, so uh, so.
So the whole setup for giving the Torah, the giving of the Torah embedded in the story of the children of Israel and of humanity is, is Hashem working hard to return us to Him. And He did that because He loves us. You know, I learned a little song one time it said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John? Amen. So, because he loves us, you know. And the Torah, of course, leads us to Messiah. King David said it. King David said it. And it was prophetic. Okay? Prophetically, David said, Messiah says through David, okay? Here I am, I'm coming. In the scroll of a book, it is written about me. Doing your will, my God, is my joy. Torah is in my inmost being. That's from King David. The author of the book of Hebrews identifies this passage as being about Messiah Yeshua. He says in Hebrews 10, 7, he says, look, in the scroll of the book, it is written about me. I've come to do your will. The writer of the book of Hebrew is a Jew who understood those prophecies about being messianic, about the Messiah. Now, if today you go to a Jewish congregation, you ask a Jewish rabbi, look, this verse is about Messiah. He's going to say, no, 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 no. Because modern Judaism has changed everything to make sure that it does not show that. But what we're talking here is classic Judaism, which was a let's say the Judaism from the time of Yeshua to before. After the destruction of the temple, they reorganized everything and they made sure that prophecies like this or like Isaiah 53 did not reflect a belief in Yeshua. So, uh, but classic Judaism, yes. So, where in the scroll of the book is it written about Yeshua? So let's look at a few passages. Someone said the whole history of humanity is written in the book of Bereshit, Genesis. Through Yohanan, John, we know that Hashem formed the, formed the world through the word. In the beginning was the word. Yeah. And word is an English word. In Aramaic, the word would have been memra. Memra. So I don't Aramaic and Hebrew are very similar. So you know, I don't know if you read some Hebrew text and it says. And God said to Moshe, it was started, Vayomer Elohim. Vayomer, Yomer. I don't know if you can hear the similarity within Yomer and Memra. You know, the M, the R, you know. So, uh, Memra is the saying, uh, is, that's what's been translated in, uh, in Greek as Logos, the word in English. In French, they're translated as the verb, because the verb in a sentence is, is the action word. You know, I, I teach, when I teach grammar, I always say to people, the verb is the king of the sentence. It's all about the verb. So, so we know that Hashem from the world, formed the world through the word, the memra, the logos, and right there, it tells us about him, really. Uh, that's what John used to explain to his audience who is Yeshua. So in the beginning was the Memra, you know, that Memra. Then he who is defined as the serpent, the craftiest of all animals, 
come to, comes to. No. So we're created by the word. That, but Hashem creates us with free will. Free will. And then he who is defined as a serpent, the craftiest of all animals, comes to exert temptation. He comes to tempt us. And we sin through disobedience. We sin. Then we learn about the eventual, about he who will eventually defeat the enemy. Do we have Genesis 3.15 there? Okay. And it says, I will put animosity between you and the woman and between your descendant and her descendants. I will bruise your head and you will bruise his heel. And we understand, we know who it is that wins domination over the adversary who bruises his head, like the head of a serpent. If you get rid of the serpent, you just go for the head. So let us continue. Uh, is there Psalm 104 in there too? I think Jackson, I think oh. Jackson had a question for Oh, accident, yeah. Yeah. Okay, and this is very small, huh? Okay, here we go. Um, then it says, Psalm 104, 24 says, What variety there is in your works, Adonai, how many of them are? In wisdom you have them made them all. The earth is full of your creations. So he says he's made, David says that Hashem created everything in wisdom. So again, Mia, read something like, if I really, 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 really want to know what it says, I'm going to go read it in Hebrew. Because prepositions are a trip. <laughs> prepositions are a trip. And prepositions can change. So I want to see which the here there is in wisdom. Okay, uh, how does it say that in Hebrew? Does it say through wisdom, by wisdom, in wisdom? What does it say? I want to know the preposition, which is the idea behind learning Hebrew. So but it says he did his work in wisdom. Well. King Solomon confirms that very idea. Just like and, and just like John in the in his writing, he gives certain imagery names to Yeshua. We played with some of those during Sukkot, uh, such as bread of life, Lamb of God, the Word, I am. Solomon speaks of the foreman of the creation of the earth by calling him wisdom. So he says, and I'm going to read it, so. He says, in Proverbs 8, Wisdom is calling. Understanding is raising her voice. So in Hebrew you say wisdom, chokhmah, understanding, vina. Wisdom, understand, raising your voice. So what he's talking about is making wisdom a person that's proclaimed, the voice that proclaims, that says stuff, that, that proclaims. What did you proclaim? A two. On the heights along the road where the paths meet, she's standing. So when you have paths that meet, you have a choice. We have a choice. So wisdom stands by the road where path meets and helps us make choices. Proclaim, choose right. Like Moshe did, did on the mountain, the height, you know. He sees this dude on Mount Ebal and on Gerizim, and he said, I put before you life and death. Choose life. That's the wisdom that that uh, that proclaims three. By the gates leading into the city at the entrances, she cries aloud, oh, oh, cities are dangerous. You can hide in cities. Cities have a lot of temptations. You know, like uh, I remember uh, reading a story one time about the boy who was having a problem with his father in the countryside, you know, and they, whenever they had a problem, that they'd sit on that plow or in that tractor, and the father will talk to him. And one time he says, well, it's a lot easier to come to, 
to turn to the void where there's nothing around, rather than in the city when there's much more friends, buzz, transportation, whatever, you know, much more stuff. So, so before they go to the city, she, she's calling people, warning them. And verse 4, people, I'm calling you, raising my voice to all mankind. You who don't direct your lives, understand, understand, sorry. You who don't direct your lives, understand caution. As for you fools, get some common sense. Sadly, not so common. Listen, I will say worthwhile things. When I speak, my word I write. My mouth says what is true because my lips detest evil. All the words from my mouth are righteous. Nothing false or crooked is in them. Unless, un, unlike many, wisdom does. Wisdom speaks truth, and not uh, it doesn't speak from out of personal interest. That's when advice is crooked when advice is given for one's personal interest. But wisdom just gives the truth. Verse 9, they are all clear to those who understand and straightforward to those who gain knowledge. The words of wisdom are clear to those who understand. 10, receive my instruction rather than silver, knowledge rather than, than the finest gold. They are better than all the shiny stuff around. Then we, now we're starting to, to see similarity with what Yeshua taught. He said, work for meat that perishes not. That's what he says, work for meat that perishes not. 11, for wisdom is better than pearls. Nothing you want can compare with her. I will, so, so it's, again, it's better than anything else you can find. The words of wisdom, which sometimes uh, are difficult to bear, they still are better than any <laughs> treasure we can, we can get. This is why there's a prayer, please make your words sweet to our mouth. You know, and uh, if you read, uh, I think it was Ezekiel and it was Jeremiah, they were given the word of God in a form, and it's, uh, it's all in a vision, in the form of a book that they swallow. And they both refer to uh, was bitter, I think bitter, sweet to the stomach and bitter to the mouth, or something like that, you know. That's why they put sugar coating around medication. <laughs> Okay, so our wisdom live together with caution. Somebody who's wise will be cautious. Attain knowledge and discretion. Discretion means to be discreet, whatever you want to. You know, to be discreet. Uh, discretion, there is a verse Solomon says, be not rash with my with thy mouth, nor be quick to utter anything before God, because you are not and God is in heaven. You know, it's like discretion. Yes, so go slow in what you say. The fear of Adonai, verse 13, the fear of Adonai is hatred of evil. Hatred of evil. Evil really is disobedience to the Torah. Good is defined by obedience to the Torah. Evil is defined by disobedience to the Torah. So the fear of Adonai is hatred of evil. And then it says, I hate pride and arrogance, evil ways and duplicitous speech. To be folk tongue, double tongue. 14, good advice is mine, common sense. Not so common. I am in sight, power is mine. By me, kings reign, and princes make just laws. By wisdom, wisdom which is the fear, beginning of wisdom is the fear of Adonai. By me, princes govern, nobles too, and all the earth's rulers. 
I love those who love me. And those who seek me will find me. Oh, seek and you shall find. That's what Yeshua said. 18. Riches and honor are with me, lasting wealth and righteousness again. He said, work not for me that perish, but work for me that lasteth into everlasting life. My fruit is better than gold. Fine gold, my produce better than the finest silver. I follow the course of righteousness along the path of justice to endow with wealth those who love me and fill their treasuries. So this is a lot of good stuff that we get from wisdom. Wisdom, yeah. So, and then Solomon continues his prophetic oracle with, with wisdom taking on, continuing with the language of a person. He says, verse 22, Adonai made me at the beginning of his ways, the first of his ancient works. I was appointed before the world, before the starts, before the earth beginning. So wisdom was appointed before his works, before the starts. Now, uh, some of you have probably said before, Judaism teaches that there are seven things Hashem created before even getting busy with creation. You know. So he says, I was, and then he says, he makes me at the beginning of his ways, the first of his ancient works. I was appointed before the world, before the world, before the start, before the earth's beginning. When I was brought forth, there was no ocean depth, nor no springs bringing, bringing, brimming with water. I was brought forth before the hills, before the mountains had settled in place. Before the mountains had settled in place. Oh, wow. He had not yet made the earth, the field, even the earth's first grain of dust. That's verse 26. So this wisdom was, it says, the first of Hashem's creation. In uh, Revelation 22, Yeshua says, I am the first and the last. Solomon continues, when he established the heavens, I was there. When, the, when he drew the horizon circle on the deep, when he set the skies above in place, when the fountains of the deeps deep poured forth. Oh, we, we get a little bit of an imagery of uh, the second day when God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the water. Dome, in Hebrew we say kippah. Let there be a dome in the middle of the water. Let it divide the water from the, the water. Uh, other translations of expanse. God made the dome and divided the water from under the dome from the water above the dome. The expanse. And that's how it was. And God called the dome sky. So there, there was evening and there was morning, a second day. And in that space between the waters, that's where he's going to put the stars and the sun and all that. 29. When he prescribed boundaries for the sea so that its waters would not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, that's like on the third day. When he said, let the water under the sky gather together into one place, let dry land appear. And that is how it was. God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters is called seas. God saw that it was good. So he limitation the borders for the sea so that it not, doesn't transgress his command. And then he says, there I was 
beside him like a master workman. So if you read different uh, translations, you'll get different ways, uh, different translation of this word, of this word master workman. I took the ESV because I feel it defines more the word emun, amun, which is like, and you can look at it yourself if you have a concordance. Uh, the word there in Hebrew means foreman. It, it means really the foreman, like when you do a project, you know, you have an architect is going to give you the plan. He's going to give the plan to a crew that's going to build that thing. And this crew has uh, a leader, the foreman. You see, the foreman. So, uh, so he says, there I was, I was with him like a master workman. And it was daily his delight. So he's talking about I don't know. I cannot say what's going on, but he's talking. I was the first creation before, and before everything was made, I was there, being daily his delight, rejoicing in him always. It's like it's a very interesting. Um, and then he says, playing everywhere on his earth and delighting to be with humankind. You know, so can go wherever you want with that. But it's pretty interesting. You know, and Genesis 3 9, uh, they heard G Genesis 3 9 says, they heard the voice of Adonai God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. breeze. So the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Adonai God among the trees in the garden. And Adonai called the man, Where are you? So again, uh, Ju Judaism considers Proverbs 8. And I know that in Christian thought, there is differences of what Proverbs 8 is all about. So I just want to let you know that in general, Proverbs 8 is considered being a text, a prophetic text about Messiah. Um, This works with Yohanan, who introduces Messiah to his readers by saying, and I said it before, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things came to be through him, and without him, nothing made had being. Oh, I like how it says in English, nothing made had being. That's interesting. So, Paul also refers to, oh, there we go, no, also refers to Messiah as Hashem's wisdom. But to those, and he says in 1 Corinthians 1 24, but to those uh, who are called both Jews and Greeks, the same Messiah is God's power and God's wisdom. So now, uh, we see what David may have meant when he said, when he said, uh, when he said what? When he said, of me, it is written of me in the scroll of a book. He is actually he was familiar with, he says, the Messiah, the, the scroll of the book leads us to Messiah. Amen. And that's his wisdom. Abba Father, we thank you uh, for the wisdom in which you um, created the world. You created us. Help us as uh, disciples of Yeshua to exemplify that wisdom, to hear wisdom when it calls us uh, at the cross of pathways, when it calls us to make 
certain choices, choices that may be either easy or hard, uh, help us to heed that voice. You made us with uh, a mind to search, a desire to find you, and help us to, to use that wisdom, to use these words of the Torah, to find you and um, allow you to even come closer and closer and closer to our hearts. Like King Solomon also said, the path of the righteous is like a light that shines more brightly, that shines more brightly day by day until we come to that perfect light. Shem Yeshua Mashiach, Amen. Voila. So I guess we'll uh, do some wise singing. I don't know if we can do it without Christina, but we're going to try. Get to the next slide. Thank you. 
song I wrote on a long time ago, on a first fruit day, resurrection day, third day after the crucifixion, and it says, so I know the first song Christina and I that we sang together, it says, an eternity against time, a whole eternity yes I will wait. Pain and suffering have filled my heart, but I don't lose hope that one day he will return. The time to say a new refrain, to walk on a new path, on the dusty road I walk and I hope, but I never lose hope that one day he will return. If the time has passed on my... Oh gosh, that is difficult for me to say if time has passed on, on my disappointed dreams, if my heart is broken and I, I don't know anymore, and even if today I cry, don't think that I'm afraid, because I never lose hope that one day he will return. That's what the song says. Je ne perds pas l'espoir, car je ne vivre rien. C'est 
Wisdom and grace are before his glory. That's what it says. Amen. So, our Father, we thank you for this time of uh, prayer, learning, singing, dancing, fellowship, and we ask that you. Continue being with us during the rest of the Shabbat. And uh, we know we don't have only good eats, we still have only the rest of the Shabbat. Shem Mashiach. Amen. Amen.
Shabbat shalom. I know it's always different. 